I don't care if you're playing tennis, outdoor basketball, or pickleball, recently Yonex's outsole rubbers have been the very best in terms of feel, performance, durability, just everything. And the Eclipsian 5, honestly, I feel like they're getting toward the pinnacle of it because these things have some of the best feeling that I have just had in a tennis or outdoor basketball shoe in quite a long time. Let's get into them. And a big thanks to Yonex for sending me a pair of these over to check out. Hover, they have no editorial control of this video. All opinions, as always, for all my own. Now, before I get into the outsole tread, let's talk about the rest of the shoe. Now, in the Eclipsian line, we're used to seeing a polyurethane cage go throughout the entire shoe. What I like about this one is, is that the lace lines are really chunky polyurethane, and you do get a pretty far proximal uh, lace eyelet here for a runner's knot, which is outstanding. Um, you do get a pretty aggressive gusset as well on the tongue, which is pretty decently padded. But I think the most interesting thing is, is you do get this real like rubbery plastic piece here on the heel for a little bit more efficient dragging or sliding, especially on a hard court. On clay courts, I did get the clay version of these as well. Uh, on clay courts, it doesn't really matter, but on a hard court, that is pretty nice because you're not ruining this really nice fabric layer here on the heel counter, which does look pretty nice, but like I said, it probably would you know break down pretty easily. That does give a nice little protection for that. Now, if you look at this thing on the breathability test, which I found pretty darn interesting, they only heated up 111.7 degrees. And for all that polyurethane, that is pretty good. When I noticed, uh, when I take the uh, thermometer now, when I do the breathability test, I actually you know go with the thermometer here. And I noticed that most of the heat was actually escaping this lateral portion here with all the polyurethane which is pretty nice. At least you know with all that protection, you are still getting some breathability out from this. Now, uh, the breathability mapping, most of the fog is coming out from the sides of the tongue. You're not getting too much egress from the polyurethane. It, you know, so, you know, they are gonna hold on a little bit more moisture, but at least for heat exchange, they aren't too bad for a polyurethane shoe. Now, if you look at these things on the upper durability test though, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I mean, yeah, the, the burr barely makes an impression on that upper. Like most polyurethane shoes we've seen, um, Asics included, you know, there's just, there's really not much going on here in terms of, you know, dragging or sliding. So in terms of dragging or sliding, uh, for basketball, tennis, pickleball, whatever you're playing, this thing is just gonna, you know, really last you the duration. Beginning into the midsole teardown, this is what we're kind of used to seeing with Yonex shoes here. Uh, you've got the, the power cushion in the rear foot and the forefoot. That's Yonex's, you know, more proprietary foam blend with those elastic resins in there. Does feel very pillowy. You actually do feel them because it is more top loaded here in the Eclipsian 5. You get a little slab of it here in the forefoot. It is pretty thin. Uh, but it is pretty resilient foam too. So it, more you're gonna feel it as the shoe gets older and start, you know, and you start wearing the shoe down more. Whereas with a lot of other shoes, you'll feel like your foot's bottoming through the ground. Whereas in these ones, that's when I think you're gonna start to see the benefits of the forefoot power cushion. Whereas you start to notice them more immediately in the rear foot. The rest of it, just Yonex is pretty standard carrier foam. The shank in these, yeah, it is carbon fiber, but it is just so thin. It's so flexible and so short. Honestly, it's not doing much in a lot of Yonex shoes. You also get a pretty you know, thick molded rubber foam shank on the bottom of it. These ones do not have that. It, it's, it's just the same carrier foam. So um, yeah, I mean, obviously there's a shank there, so it's gonna do something, right? You're gonna get a little bit more load sharing in them, but in terms of shanks, this one is, is, is there mainly just for a little bit more stability in the midfoot, not so much for a diving board effect or really any launch in the shoe. But speaking of that launch in the shoe, you look at the bounce height test, got 29 centimeters in the heel and then 33 in the forefoot. You kind of see the more the power cushion there, the more shock absorbing it is, then the more you get the carrier plus. Uh, you know, the, the, the power cushion, it, a little bit more bouncy it becomes. So no, not a rocket ship of a shoe, but very, very accommodating, very, very comfortable. And as we'll see other sections, the shoe is still pretty lightning quick. But getting into, you know, the title of this video and obviously my favorite part of this shoe is its outsole tread. Now, you know, the, the pattern of it is pretty simple, right? It's a pretty flat herringbone under the big toe joint, and then it becomes that arrow pattern in the lateral forefoot and then medial heel, you know, it flips in the rear foot. Now, what I like about this one though is, is that in the medial rear foot and lateral forefoot, those arrows are actually different depths. So you get this really interesting grip on the ground, right? You can slide on it because it's flat herringbone here on the medial side. So if you want to slide, you can slide. But on the lateral side, this is where the shoe is getting most of its grip. Now you do have these pivot points here under the medial side too, so the shoe does bend very easily. If you look at it on the viewing box, it's not much to see, right? It's, it's flat herringbone. So the, the shoe more moves as a unit. On the grip test ramp, the same as the Fusion, 
and Rev 5 in slips at 37 degrees, which kind of now has become my gold standard for that ramp. I think that's the best mix of being able to slide, but also being able to, to grab traction. It's just that, you know, with this varying depth traction on the lateral side and then on the medial side of the heel, there's just honestly nothing better. It feels so good underfoot. These things stop on a dime when you want them to, right? As long as you know how to plant your foot, especially playing tennis or pickleball, as long as you know how to plant, I mean, these things give you the best mixture of forgiveness and sliding, but also for pivot power, for, for stopping power. And, and that's why, I mean, the, the compound of Yonex rubber is also very good. I mean, if you look at the outsole durability test on these things, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, it basically just scuffs it up, right? The durometer is pretty high on these things. But for how durable it is, for how tactile and just how nice it feels underfoot, right? It just feels like you, know, you can feel the rubber interacting with the ground on these. It's so crazy. For how that feels and just how much durability there is on this thing, like I said, I just don't think it gets much better. And looking at the speed ratio, it comes in at a 2.04, then it bumps up to 2.24 with the shank score of 0 0.2. I, 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 you know, it's there. I got to give it, even though, like I said, it is, it's, it's a little bit suspect up there. But the thing that I noticed about these is, is it's the shoe as a whole that produces all the speed in it, right? There's so much confidence side to side. They're so unencumbering going north to south. It's such a quick shoe to get up to speed, right? It's It feels bottom light, but also bottom stable, right? Like a lot of Puma shoes in basketball, they feel super bottom stable, but also they feel very hefty underfoot. Whereas these ones have that same stability underfoot, but they feel bottom light. So you really just feel like you're hauling in these shoes. Even someone like me, who's more lumbering on the court, you feel like you are just sprinting. So in terms of shoe for speed, even though the speed ratio doesn't reflect it, it is just like I said before in the video, a lightning quick shoe. But what was the most pleasantly surprising part of the Eclipsian 5 was its fit. Now, yes, it still does have a pretty decent inflare on it and the length is pretty true but it comes in at a 9.1 centimeter width for a men's size 11. Now that's quite a bit wider than most other Yonex shoes in their standard size. I know that they make these in a 2E sometimes. In some parts of the world, you can get them, some parts you can't. But in the standard Yonex, you know, Eclipsian 5, these things were quite a bit more forgiving than the Eclipsian 4 and the Fusion Rev line. So that was really nice to see for me. I did not feel any cramping in these whatsoever. They broke in very nice, especially for a polyurethane back shoe. They had a very nice break-in profile, both the hardcore version as well as the clay. I had zero cramping, like I said. It, well, it was just the best parts of these. Now, in terms of the snake bit and foot, because these things have a runner's knot in them that is pretty far back proximal, you can fit an orthotic in them, which is great. The power cushion does feel very good in some of the heel pain, ball of foot pain. They do have a top-loaded shank, but I would say if you are somebody with arch pain or strain, you know, any type of twisting injury, right, frontal plane or bi or triplane injuries, I would say that probably should throw an orthotic in these. That'll also give them a little bit more snap, right? Whereas yes, they do have that shank, but with an orthotic in these, you get the best parts of the bottom light, but stable feeling foam. But then you also get a little more of that diving board effect, right? You get a little bit more stiffness. So these are the perfect shoes for an orthotic. But in terms of heel pain, I think they're great. In terms of ball of foot pain for a shoe that gets that low in the forefoot, they're one of the better ones out there. But if you want to make these get up to that elite territory for pretty much any snake bite, throw an orthotic in them. And in terms of y'all important performance, the Eclipsian 5, I think, like I said, this is where they really just absolutely blew me away. These things, probably the best playing shoe this year. These ones, the AGLT 23 Ultra, uh, the Wave and Force Tour, obviously. They, they were just, like I said, they were so tactile feeling, but yet, they also had the forgiveness, they had the push off. It was just all kind of, it was all kind of there in one package with these things. On clay, the treads, like I said, uh, if you watch the, the clay top five video, go check that out. I kind of talk about the treads on these. There is a little bit of a learning curve on those treads, but they let go of clay so well. Like there, there's, there's such a unique pattern on clay. They play just as well on clay as on grass. If you use the, the, the clay treads, you can use them on grass uh, and synthetics as well as a hard court. And so in terms of a shoe for speed side to side, as well as north to south and stability, but also for a shoe, like I said, it feels like, like a real all court shoe, right? So you can get very low to the ground on, just really dig, you know, if you're digging for a pickleball, whereas if you're trying to get really wide for a tennis ball, or if you're really trying to get a stable but bottom light feeling shoe on an outdoor basketball court, like I said, 
These ones really kind of fit all three sports. Just absolutely fantastic. The one shoe for all of them, this is it. And in terms of tennis prowess, um, if these don't make the top five list this year, then there have been some really great shoes coming out between me reviewing these and the top five list coming out later in the summer. So uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these. If you've tried them, if you like them more than the Eclipsian 4, because like I said, I think the Eclipsian 4 has played fantastic. They were just so uncomfortable, right? These ones got the comfort plus the playability. I think that's what really you know brings these up into that elite territory. So like I said, love to hear your thoughts on these. Like I said, if you do want to take a deeper dive on the Eclipsian 5 on clay as well as some other really fantastic shoes, for the clay court season, I will leave that video linked up above and make sure you subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the sneakerverse.